We've made our way to Vanuatu. We're staying on a Fate Island at Tropo Mystique on the south side um, of the island. We do have good shelter here in the lagoon, but the predominant wind here is from the southeast, and it seems to be blowing from that direction the whole week we're here. Um, so this side of the island is going to be quite windy. It's about 20 knots every day. But we're going to drive over the hill to Havana Harbour, uh, get a few dives out of there hopefully, maybe just a couple of half days. That's on the western side of the island, so we'll get some shelter from the wind, and there's some good territory there we can go explore and see what we can find. First up, a shore dive with Cedric Din, one of the local Sparrows in Vanuatu. Fortunately, he had a 200 series Land Cruiser. You needed a four-wheel drive with all the potholes through all the roads here. The wind was really strong, so we had to find a nice little nook that we could jump in to try and get into some nice diving. We were really limited with time. We had about an hour to an hour and a half before it was going to get dark. We needed some fish for dinner and the signs were looking really good. I found myself a nice spot to ambush the fish. It's difficult for them to see me hiding under this underhang. A beautiful big bicolor parrot comes in. Not only are these amazing looking fish, but they're incredibly good eating. Yeah, be a big pumpkin one. The further and further we swam out, the better it got. Here's a bit of a tip as I suffer from this all the time when I'm spearing. You can see I've bailed out of the dive really, really quickly as I'm not able to equalize. My sinuses can play up quite a bit and I get a lot of blockage from mucus. So rather than pushing it, I get back to the surface and blow my nose to try and get that mucus out. There's so many good ways to combat this by making sure you drink lots of water, don't eat too much food before you go for a dive and pre-equalize. I dropped my throw flasher there to the right hand of the screen just before I dove. This works great at attracting fish in to where I plan on lying on the bottom. Sure enough, a school of small dog tooth as well as some trevally come in. This will complement the parrotfish perfect for dinner. But often where there's dog tooth, the sharks turn up as well. We were running out of light and we needed to head straight back to the beach. Fortunately, I brought my small weedy float boat so I could put these fish in there so the sharks didn't steal them on the way back to the beach. After that good shakedown dive, we were lucky enough to get invited out with Mike Larson, who is a local diver over the hill at Havana Harbour. Mike's pretty sharp when it comes to the pelagic action here in Vanuatu. He knew what to do and we had set up to drift over a nice area looking for wahoo. We would start the drift right up in shallow on top of the reef which would allow me a couple of dives to try and shoot a reef fish or two before we got out into deeper water where the wahoo might be. Yeah. 
much like the day before, the first fish I had a chance at was another big bicolor parrot. Parrot fish have such amazing white flesh and are like the butterfish of the tropics. As soon as we got in the right zone, just far enough off the coast, some really nice wahoo came in. I sort of hesitated and didn't make a dive as the fish weren't quite enticed enough to come too close. That's a good one, eh? So I quickly swam down just to pick up my flasher before it disappeared into the depth. But that was enough to get us enthused to want to do another drift. This is a steep head parrot fish. These are very distinctive by the hump on their head, especially the males that get bigger. Just as we got to the drop off, I made one last dive and this really nice coral trout took a liking to my flasher. You'll notice dropping that throw flasher can reduce the need for bottom time once you get down there. The fish are already enticed and tend to come in.
game once we got in the right territory, a nice Wahoo came in and Mike landed a decent shot on it. I hightailed it over to him to try and get another spear into the fish so we didn't lose it. And I left this part of the video in as it happens to all of us. No one wants to be that person that fluffs the second shot. I was trying to be too tricky and kill shoot this fish and ended up firing the spear over its head. Not only slightly embarrassed, but I was worried the fish might get off now. So I quickly reloaded my gun and raced back down. And I angled my gun lengthways of the fish, which allowed for a bigger target and I'm less likely to miss. I was trying to kill shoot it, I was like, ah, just over the head. yeah, I should have just tried to hit it. And then when it took off, I was like, oh shit, I hope we don't lose it. Once we had that wahoo on board, we were running out of time, as we were only out for a half day. Mike mentioned that he had a couple of spots we could check for dogtooth tuna. With the way the wind was blowing and it was really strong, we were really limited where we could go. As per usual, when looking for pelagic fish, I got sidetracked trying to shoot some of the reef species. This is a buffalo emperor. Normally a really difficult fish to target at most tropical locations, but if you're ever wanting to shoot one of these, Vanuatu is the place to go as there's lots of them. This is just a small one, but an enjoyable hunt all the same. I had speared enough reef fish to ensure we had something to eat for dinner back at the resort. So I grabbed the double rubber 130. And we hit an absolutely magical looking spot. Loaded with lots of bait fish. That certainly looked like the place to see a nice dog tooth. You'll notice I've dropped my flasher again. These work great for reef fish as well as pelagic fish. This drop off was beautiful. There was some really nice coral trout here. Lots of big Napoleon wrasse. Big surgeon fish. One of the best sights you see when spearfishing in the tropics. Schools of dogtooth tuna appearing out of the abyss. Luckily a perfect shot. 
as when I jumped in the water here, a really big greater hammerhead swam up to me. And Mike had mentioned that there's a real shark problem in this place. Even stoning this fish, a really big oceanic white tip came in and started harassing us a bit, so we needed to get it back to the boat. On the way back, another dog tooth came over the top of the bombie here. You'll see it just in the distance. I gave Sophie my real gun and told her to have a go. I rushed to unclip my float line off the initial gun, still holding that other dog tooth as I want to get it to her before her reel runs out. It's not the best choice to shoot a dog tooth with a reel gun if you're not used to it. My camera cuts out just as all the action is happening, but that dog tooth gets absolutely mauled by a pack of sharks. I was lucky I to get my spear back. Still my shark here. Yeah, so I pass it, pass that to me. Is that a fight that Mike? Right at the end of the trip, Mike was kind enough to take us out for one last quick dive. We had been hampered by really strong winds, so we were so limited to where we could dive. Fortunately, Mike had some really nice spots so, so close to the harbour. In only a short 10 minute boat trip, we were into Wahoo. He even had a big sailfish swim up to him when we were in the water, as well as dog tooth tuna and lots of reef fish. It was the same game plan. We threw over the sea anchor, dropped the flasher, and drifted out off the reef. Today the water was quite dirty, only being maybe 13 to a hazy 15 metres viz. But sure enough, this lovely big wahoo came in on Mike's throw flasher. So, if you stay with the boat, okay? Fortunately, I didn't miss the second shot, as this is a great example of, if in doubt, put another spear in the fish. Watch as Mike's initial spear pops out. This wahoo had tore a massive hole in it. <laughs> How did you get that one there, Mark? Wee Mike, was, sorry. Wee was from uh, Mangalulu, <laughs> Threw my flasher to the side. Didn't look for anyone else. I just shot it in, its, in the worst place possible. <laughs> <laughs> Tore a big hole. At least you landed it, though, eh? With one hour left in the day, we decided to head back into the reef just for a couple more dives, in case we could find a dog tooth tuna or some more reef fish. Watch how effective this throw flasher is 
on this buffalo emperor. Again, these fish are normally quite tricky to get close to. But with the throw flash and a lucky approach, I managed to land a good shot. These are awesome looking fish and have a huge mouth. On the very last dive of the day, we drifted over in an area that had quite a bit of bait sitting above all the broken reef. One last deployment of my throw flasher. It attracted in big parrotfish, and on the way down I spotted a nice jobfish. Rather than angling towards it, I decided to get to the bottom, as often they're gonna feel more comfortable. And sure enough, look how effective it is. I barely touch the bottom and it comes straight in. Fairly average shot on my part though as I only just clip the top of the fish. Sometimes those angled up shots are really tricky. A huge thank you to Mike Larson for taking us out in Havana Harbour, as well as Cedric Din and Loic Din for taking us out on another couple of dives. We certainly made the most of it with the bad weather that we had. If you're thinking of heading to Vanuatu anytime soon, there's a huge expansive area that you can be diving with a big variety of reef species as well as good pelagic action without a big boat trip. <laughs>